Hey guys, Dr. Dobson, and in this video we're going to be doing a root canal retreatment. Here's an x-ray of the tooth in question. You can see there's a large cavity on the back side of it, and circled in yellow is the abscess uh, fistula from the uh, previous root canal, which was not successful. Clinically, you can see there's a fistula, and that's just a pimple that drains pus from the infection. Uh, and it actually was not until the tooth fractured off, as you can see it now, uh, that the patient said, okay, let's deal with this thing. So... We're gonna do the root canal retreatment and then the crown. Uh, gonna put some flowable composite on the tooth before I take a preliminary impression so that we can temporize the thing. I'm gonna whack off the, uh, the flowable composite that was just there to be a placeholder for the uh, preliminary impression and then we're gonna drill into the uh, orifice. And you can see the GP there. The uh, distal margin went subgingivally and too much so to just use cords. So we're going to use a electrocautery tip to ablate a couple millimeters of intraproximal tissue before getting the rubber dam on. And I like to extend the rubber dam a couple teeth in either direction for a little bit more working space. And then we're going to start um, put a little bit of liquid down there as well. And then we're going to start by putting in some chloroform to the orifice and then augering out the... Uh, the old gutta percha with a SX drill. And the chloroform just kind of softens the GP a little bit. Uh, there you can see the old GP on the on the uh, file there. Going to put some more chloroform in and just keep keep drilling down until we're at the root tip. found that chloroform is helpful but not absolutely necessary for retreats. I've done retreats without chloroform but it it is a nice little thing to have. And then we're gonna use our uh, S1 and taking it all the way down to the red line because we really wanna ensure that the uh, apical um, final millimeter is like well instrumented and sterilized because that's what's gonna determine success and bone healing. So we'll, we'll drill down put in a little bit more chloroform if we need to, and then keep going with our S1 until we have a uh, red line indicator on our apex locator, which is the root ZX2 is what I use personally. And then I think we're gonna start using hypochlorite and and um, just working up our regular sequence of files. These are not special files. These are just the regular packages that I use. I've, I use these files for you know, initial root canals or retreats. It doesn't really make a difference in my opinion, except for price. And then um, we're gonna work to the 2506. This is the second to last file. And we're gonna work that down to the green line or the red line if you want to, just to ensure openness, patency, and then irrigating. And then usually the last two files, especially for a retreat, I'm going to take a little bit of RC prep and get that to the apex, get it to bubble up, and then uh, irrigate, and then I'll start using the uh, endo activator. And these types of cases is super important to ensure total sterilization of the apex, otherwise you won't see bone healing. And the infection will just remain chronic. So really irrigating well and activating well a couple times between files. And then this is going to be our final file. This is a 3504, taking that down to the green line. And then the preparation is going to be complete. <clears throat> irrigating, activating. I generally don't take a, uh, a working length x-ray unless the um, apex locator is being particularly finicky, which in this case it wasn't. So, But I did take a cone fit. This one was long, so I think I snipped the end a little bit or sized up to make sure that the master cone was uh, not too far out the apex. We're going to start drying with F3 paper points. And um, we remove this one. We see a little bit of uh, red, little exudate, uh, which is perfectly fine. It just means it went out the apex a little bit. No problem. <clears throat> now 
Another one we see just a hint of red, that's perfect. So we're gonna obturate with a bioceramic sealer with the hydraulic condensation obturation technique, which is the best way to obturate in my opinion. And we're gonna put the tip down as far as we can get it and then start filling it up, kind of tamp it up and down a little bit to make sure that the sealer gets to the as far to the apex as possible. And then the GP cone is gonna squish it down the rest of the way. Hopefully see a little bit of a puff. Snip the excess GP and then and then just drill down the rest with a burr. And then we'll be ready to restore the tooth with a buildup and a crown prep. Put a temporary on it. And that's pretty much gonna be finished with the root canal. Just packing it in a little bit more here. This probably wasn't necessary. But now we're going to be ready to place our core, and I use Equia Forte as documented in the instructions for use. Uh, Equia Forte is indicated to be used as a core buildup material. I'm going to do a quick etch and rinse, dry, and then apply our material overfilling, packing in with a cotton pellet, and then waiting four minutes before uh, proceeding with the uh, preparation for the crown. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can use a KS. This is a KSO. I'm trying not to take too much of the pericervical dentin away. And standard crown prep. That's pretty much looking good. Uh, the uh, the portion of the gingiva that we use the uh, electrocautery tip on to ablate, uh, cord is not useful in those areas. So we're just going to pack cord from the uh, mesobuckle to the distal, sorry, distal lingual to distal buckle. And then we're going to take our scan. The scanner went quick there. And then take our uh, our temporary impression with our temp material. Uh, trim down the temp to the margins. I, pr I make my temps personally. I find it's quick and easy enough to do. And, and then we'll check the bite, make sure that there's no contact on the temp. Happy there. We'll take out the cord. And then cement our temporary crown. And that's pretty much going to be uh, the conclusion of this day's procedure. There's the post-op PA, little puff. This one's, you know, we're going to be happy. This one's going to heal up just fine within a couple of months.